Buenas, buenas. Welcome to Music Marketing TV. I'm Kevin Ochoa, and today we're going to go over the second part of our Growth Suite series. In the first part, we learned how to automate and uh, use Growth Suite for live performances, and we also learned how to use a time volume feature along with the envelope. But today we're going to learn how to apply Growth Suite for creative purposes inside your tracks, whether it's on the production side or on the mixing side. The first tip I want to start off with is using the time section for your samples and to create repitching and such things. So I'll play you guys this loop. As you guys can hear, it's a pretty plain loop. Now I'm going to turn on all the gross speeds and the sends. As you guys can hear, the whole song just completely changed. It, it became a completely new thing. Um, it's I have a theory. If you guys have probably heard a uh, "Mask Off" by Future, it was produced by Metro Boomin. I have a theory that it was run through a half speed on gross speed and then bounced out. The sample that is. Now we can actually keep doing more things to this. For example, we can have this like that. <laughs> And again, it's endless. We can get very surgical. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can make and completely change your samples using Growth Speed. Uh, one other thing before I go to the next tip, this crash, I just love how it sounds with uh, eight and a half time. So this is how it sounds before. And then once you add the half time, I don't know, it just makes it sound very mean. All right, let's go on to the next tip. In this case, Gross Beats volume envelope is very important so that I don't have a messy reverb with the kick. Let's take a listen. Without the Gross Beat, that kick is washed out with the reverb. When I throw the Gross Beat on, every time the kick hits, it's clean. And that's very important. I don't want anything to mess around with my kick. I don't want the phases to be inverted and whatnot. So this is one area where side chaining via gross speed is better than side chaining via the limiter because with the limiter, you're not gonna be able to side chain such a big thing as a kick drum that has a sine wave that goes all the way down and reaches 40 Hertz for the duration of the whole note. So I see a lot of people going out and getting plugins that do the tape stop effect, but it's so easy to do with something like gross speed. So I don't, I don't see why people do that. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that type of effect. So I have the gross speed in the time section. There's actually a preset under the momentary tab. And what you can do with it is uh, select the vinyl stop. And that will actually get you to something that's free, pretty similar to this. However, I think the only thing that's different is that this thing goes all the way over to the end. Let's actually open up a new one to check that out. Okay, as you can see, it's pretty similar, except that I modified it so it's just right for this project. So let's take a listen without hit on. So basically, I just want to have the tape stuff come in before the little precautions here. So I set it up inside of the gross beat to go and affect before the percussions hit and then let it go uh, at the end, be right before the percussions come in. So let's take a listen from before. Now there's a few things that I could do to make this sound cleaner. I could make this come in before so it doesn't get that click. I can also select uh, click reduction and uh, high. And that's actually much smoother. So there you guys have it. It's super easy to do this. All you have to do is 
make sure that your time is less than here than the, the, the top because that means as we're going down like as I explained in the first video we're actually letting, stretching out the time so similar to the tape stop effect where there's more time coming on this is it for this video if you guys like the tips give it a like subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you guys next time